Christ Church. And to all of you who are visiting with us for the first time, it is such a joy to have you with us this evening. Welcome, and even though it's early, Merry Christmas! I have a couple of announcements before we get started this evening. My name is Beth Rambicure. I am the pastor here, and I am so excited to welcome you for this evening service. Our 5 p.m. service is geared towards families. So if you are here with a family or if you are here with just yourself, you are in the right place and get ready to have some fun with the Christmas story. As you came in, I hope you had an opportunity to receive a jar with some nativity sticker silhouettes. We are going to be telling the Christ story tonight in a very different way. And each of us is hopefully as a group going to get a chance to build one of these jars together. And hopefully you got a jar that does include a light string. The trick to the light string is you have to open it and take out the little clicker and then you've got to push the button three times or it'll strobe you to death um, and that'll bring on the steady light so if you're looking for that that's how that works if you didn't get a lid which most of you did not there in the back when you leave today we hope that you grab one so that you can take the light of christ with you into the world if you are joining us online this is a perfect time to find a nativity somewhere in your house that you can use to reflect on as we tell this story our regular worship times are at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Yes, we are having worship tomorrow. We hope you all will join us at 10 o'clock in the morning. We're going to have a lot of fun as we celebrate the birth of Christ again. Also, for those of you who are with us for the first time, we will be taking up an offering this evening. All offerings go to support the ministries and ongoing efforts of Christ Church. Finally, as you leave, we hope that you receive a gift bag for those who are younger in your family. There should be enough for all kids to get one. So if you didn't get one on your way in, we hope you get one on the way out so that your kiddos will have something to play with as they drive home. My friends, oh yes, restrooms. We have one restroom here in the back of the lobby and then two restrooms, uh, lots of uh, men's and women's restrooms downstairs. Downstairs can be ac uh, accessed through the stairs on either side and the elevator. My friends, those are all the announcements I have as we begin our time of worship together. And so let us celebrate the birth of Christ in our lives as we hear, as we come here to worship this evening.
Please stand as you're able and join me in the call to worship. We cite the sacred in everything. Light strings, evergreens, singing choirs, and quiet trees. We cite the sacred in everything. Stories read by candle glow and God revealed for all to know. For these sacred sightings now become our participation in God's love for everyone. is a season of waiting. We wait with friends, with family. We wait for news. We wait for Christmas. But most of importantly, we wait with God. We wait with God as God speaks the world into creation, speaks light into being, 
We wait with God, whose living word is hope incarnate. God's hope speaks to us once more through wandering shepherds and visions of angels, giving us a peace that surpasses understanding and teaching us to share that peace with all the world. A peace which causes joy to burst forth from challenge, releasing us from all that holds us captive and healing all that is broken. A joy given to all the world for the, the Lord of life has been born. Emmanuel comes among us, God's love made human, to be held by us, nurtured, treasured, and raised by us. What wondrous love is this? God's love, joy, peace and hope made present to all of us in Christ. As we see again the sacred work of love, we too participate in this story of salvation. We come as shepherds and wise men, angels and onlookers, as adults and children, learners and wanderers, people seeking the sacred born among us tonight. Light our way, O God, Emmanuel. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Have you all ever taken a road trip? Anyone here ever gone on a road trip anywhere? Okay, good. I'm glad to see most of us have that experience in common. Out of curiosity, did things go as planned? Yes, maybe, no. <laughs> did at least one unplanned thing happen while you were on that trip? Yes, right, that's what life is. During our first reflection, we have an opportunity to think about the journey that Mary and Joseph took, what it meant for them to be called to go and register in this foreign city, all the different things that probably went wrong along the way, which culminated in the fact that Mary didn't have a place to give birth to Jesus. And so they ended up having to use a manger in a stable. Tonight, as we work through the nativity story, we're going to have the opportunity to reflect on what that experience was like, both for the characters who participated and in our own lives. So as you take Mary and Joseph and the manger off your sticker sheet as a group or on your own, reflect for a moment on what this trip must have been like. What did they talk about? What happened on the way? And how did God show up once they arrived at that manger? Go ahead and talk amongst yourself as you stick that manger onto your jar.
Take a few moments to find a good stopping place in your reflection with each other. God calls us to unexpected journeys all the time. Sometimes even walking out the door brings us into new places that we never expected to go. Let us be ready all the way along the way to meet God in unexpected places. Let us join together and sing, Infant Holy, Infant Lowly. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the messiah the lord this will be a sign to you you will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising god and saying glory to god in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors Signs come in all kinds of shapes. I think that my favorite sign is the one that says dead end, because you never know what's going to come once you go past that sign. And there are a number of those signs all over on our roads and in our lives. But tonight, as the angels appeared, they gave a different kind of sign. Imagine what would happen if you were out maybe camping or maybe as you're driving home tonight and suddenly a whole bunch of angels appeared over your car or over the bus. That would be pretty unnerving, right? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I would probably maybe need to go see my doctor right away. <laughs> I want you to take a moment to think about how you might react if you saw angels coming to where you were, sharing news that Christ had been born. And take a moment to find those angels on your sheet and place them on your jar as you share with each other what you might think of those angels' announcement.
Take a moment to finish your reflections with one another. It's always wonderful to hear the story of how the angels appeared. And yet when we really consider what it would be like to have this annunciation made in our own lives, I think it takes our breath away. And so what would it look like as we leave this place tonight to be ready to encounter that heavenly host crying out to us that indeed, Christ has been born, go and see, and consider how we would respond. Let us sing together, angels we have heard on high. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed by what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. We know what the shepherds did because we have their story written down here. But what do you think those shepherds talked about on their way to Bethlehem to see this baby born? What do you think they talked about afterwards? What kinds of words do you think they shared with those that they came together with as they glorified and praised God for all they had seen and heard? We get the opportunity to enter into the story as the shepherds do and talk about what we've heard both on our way to Bethlehem and then as we leave the manger. And so as you take up your sheep and your various shepherds tell the story about what they might have shared with each other, perhaps what they would have said to each other both on their way to see what had happened 
and also on their way back home. A sheep. Uh huh. Down there, down there, at the bottom. <laughs> you can never wind down, sheep. Mm -hmm. Either that or Joseph. Oh, he's already in here. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's a sheep. Is that a sheep? No, that's a donkey. That's a donkey. Oh, that's, that's right. That's a donkey. There's the three wise men. Yeah. So we already put that one next. Yep. Okay. Take a moment to finish your reflections with one another. One of the beautiful things about the gospel is that we are constantly share, called to share the good news in the same way that is modeled for us. And so as we consider the stories that those shepherds told both on their way and as they came back, we enter into the story as shepherds ourselves, having the opportunity to consider what it is we are looking for and what it is we will tell the world about what we found in that stable. Let us sing together the first Noel.
the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened in all Jerusalem with him and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the, the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasured chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been born, born in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The wise men have the longest trip of this evening. We don't know how long it took them to follow the star. Maybe it was even years. But what we do know is that they set out and they completed their mission, despite the time it took and all of the different dangers and challenges they faced along the way. The wise men journey is a lot like our life. All kinds of different things come up at unexpected times. And we have to ask ourselves, what journey will we take now? Will we keep following the star we set out to find? Or will we do something else? As you place your wise men and their camels and the star on your jar, consider what they would have thought about on their journey and what things you think about on the long, life journey you take. What will it feel like when you finally arrive at the place you are searching for? That's a long time to sit on that camel. Take a moment to finish your reflection on that long journey that the wise men shared. Our journey to find Christ is a lifelong journey, one that starts no matter where we are, no matter what it is we're doing, but continues with us throughout our lives. We are constantly searching the same way the wise men were, 
and constantly seeing different signs that give us different kinds of information. Let us open our ears and our hearts to see the dreams and the stars that God puts in our way so that we indeed might find what it is we set out for and continue looking for God all along our way. Let us sing, We Three Kings. I'm going to invite the kids to come up for a children's moment. You don't have to come up, but if you're under the age of 18, go ahead and join me up here. We'll just have a moment to chat. I promise I don't bite. Well, unless you're a carrot. <laughs> You guys are so brave. I'm really old and I still get scared when I sit in front of the church. So well done, you guys. Okay, let's see here. I've got a whole bunch of stuff up here. What do I have over here? What do you see? Do you see anything over here? Let's see. What do you guys see over here? Let me get out of the way so you can see it really well. I've got this guy. Whoa, who is this? You guys know which character this guy is? Is he a shepherd? Maybe. No, he's not a shepherd. I think he might be because he's carrying a sheep. All right, this one is, yeah, that's right. He's a shepherd. I've got another character here is really heavy. Yes, exactly. We have got a king. How cool is that? He's super heavy, so I'm going to be really careful putting him down. All right, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here's a character we did not hear in this story. It's a cow. How cool is that? Why is there a cow here? Yeah. That's right. The cow is here because it's been eating out of the manger. Exactly. So we use nativities like this to tell the story of Jesus. Do you guys have a nativity at home? Do you have a setup with, yes? What do you have at home? No way, really? Does it spin around? Like, is it on? Oh, oh, no, no, no. Wrong kind of mobile. <laughs> That's very cool. And what about you? What do you have? Yes. 
Exactly. You know what's really cool about that? I used to take all of my Disney characters and make nativity scenes out of them. So like Ursula was one of the wise men. It was very cool. All right. And then we have here a whole nother nativity that you guys put together today while you were in your service. You know what these are like? These are different ways that we tell the story. We take a little snapshot of what it is that happened and it helps us remember the whole story. And now each of you has a snapshot that you can take home with you so that you can tell the story anytime you want. You know why that's important? I don't know why it's important either, right? You gotta come up with that answer. It's important because God comes into our lives in all kinds of different ways, using all kinds of different material to help us tell the story. So we have to pay attention. And that way we can participate just like the shepherds and the king and the cow. How cool is that, huh? Will you guys do a prayer with me? All right, we're gonna do a weird prayer. I'm gonna have you guys put your hands together like this. Can you guys do that? Oh my gosh, you're so good. And I'm gonna have you repeat after me. Congregation, can you help us out? All right, repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for all the ways you help us tell the story. Use us as characters to tell the story to others. Amen. And now we have a really weird tradition in the church with the kids where we shout amen as loud as possible. Do you guys think you'd be willing to give that a try? I know it's really scary to shout in church. That's a good response. Congregation, can you help me out? Let's all say amen together on the count of three, okay? One, two, three. Amen.
Our final reflection tonight is just that. We have the opportunity to go and tell this story in all kinds of different ways, using all kinds of different means. And so I hope that this story will go with you and that you will find ways to share with one another good, the good news that we have heard here tonight and participate with what it is that God is doing in our lives. Let us find ways in all things that we do to share this story with all the world. And all God's people said, Amen. My friends, we are going to take a moment to offer up our gifts and tithes to God as our ushers come forward. Do not feel as if you have to give something this evening, for the greatest gift you have to offer is the gift of yourselves and the way that you live in this world. Let us offer our gifts to God. given yourself to us we offer up these gifts to you and most importantly the gift of our lives that you might use us to continue to tell your story of good news and love to all the world in the name of christ we pray amen you may be seated i don't know if pastors are supposed to have favorite parts of worship services but the lighting of the Christ candle is absolutely my favorite. And so as we light the Christ candle tonight, let us remember those words that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and he was in the beginning with God and all things came into being through him and without him, not one thing came into being. And what has come into being in him was life. And life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it. Let us participate in sharing that light 
by lighting our own stories as we rise and sing joy to the world. benediction. May you go forth into the world to tell the story of Christ's good news with your lives. In all you do, in all places that you go, let the light of Christ shine through you. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. My friends, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. That concludes our service of worship this evening. Let us go forth and celebrate. you like the jar? I think Paul probably have one. Oh, okay. <laughs>